So we've talked about accelerations and velocities and displacements. The other way we have of solving mechanical or uh, mecha any mechanical system is to discuss the energy involved in such a system. And so now we're going to look at the energy in a simple harmonic oscillator. So again, here we have our mass spring system. We know the displacement and, of course, we can find the velocity by differentiating the displacement with respect to time, which we've done before, and we got this expression. And now we're asking ourselves, what is the kinetic energy? Well, the kinetic energy, at least in Newtonian mechanics, is a half m v squared. So using the symbol that we often use for kinetic energy, T, then we have a half m omega squared times a squared times sine squared of omega t plus phi. And so this is our expression for the kinetic energy as a function of time. So we can see from our expression for the kinetic energy of this mass on the end of a spring that the kinetic energy is oscillating. And so at some points we have zero. Those are going to be the points where it's at the bottom of the motion and at the top of the motion where it's instantaneously at rest. And we have a maximum kinetic energy in the middle of the motion. The difference when we compare it to expressions for things like the displacement or the velocity is that, of course, it depends on velocity squared. And so now, instead of a cosine or a sine term, we have a sine squared term, which is always positive. So we've now got an expression for the kinetic energy. Next, let's have a look at the potential energy. So here we have our mass spring system, and again, our displacement as a function of time is this formula that we've seen many times before. What we're asking ourselves now is what is the elastic potential energy of this system? And the elastic potential energy stored in a spring is just a half times the spring constant times x squared. And that comes from integration of the force with respect to x uh, from 0 to some known extension x here. And that, of course, is just the integral of kx with respect to x from 0 up to x. And that gives us a half kx squared. So all we have to do to calculate the elastic potential energy, and we'll use the symbol U here, which is commonly used for potential energy, and so all we have is it's a half times K, and then times this uh, uh, function here squared. So that's A squared times the cosine squared of omega T plus phi, and that gives us our expression for the potential energy. And for a horizontal mass spring system like this, the only potential energy is the elastic potential energy in the spring. So now that we have an expression for the potential energy, we can look and see how it varies through the cycle. Now for this oscillator, things are a little bit more complicated because we have a gravitational potential energy as well as an elastic potential energy. But if you go through the maths and you study and calculate the total potential energy for this oscillator, you will actually end up with the same type of expression that we got for our simpler horizontal mass spring system. And so, as we can see here, the potential energy is a maximum both at the bottom and at the top. And again, it varies this time with a cosine squared distribution. And when the potential energy is at a maximum, the kinetic energy is at a minimum. And so we have this sort of seesaw mechanism going on where we start with potential energy. It converts into kinetic energy. The kinetic energy then converts back into potential and so on. And so we have the energy types oscillating backwards and forwards between kinetic and potential. And that's what we generally find for just about any mechanical oscillator. Now, that's looked at the two individual types of energy, but we also have this rather important law in physics called conservation of energy. And so what we'd expect for an ideal simple harmonic oscillator is that the total energy is constant because there's no external forces doing work on the system. So now let's look at the total energy of a simple harmonic oscillator.
So here we have the expression for the total energy of our oscillator. It's the sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, and so we have this half Ka squared cos squared term and a half m omega squared a squared term. And both of these terms depend on the time, so the energy is going to be moving around from one type to another. But we're interested in what is the total value. So to do that, we've got to write this coefficient here in terms of k instead of m and omega. And to do that, we need to remember, we're dealing with a mass spring system, what our value of omega is. Well, omega squared is equal to k over m, because that's actually how we defined uh, omega. We defined omega as the square root of k divided by m. So m times omega is simply equal to k, right? m omega squared is simply equal to k. So we can rewrite this now as the total energy is equal to a half k a squared times the cosine squared of omega t plus phi plus, and now this half m omega squared just becomes a half k plus a half k a squared times sine squared omega t plus phi. Now, if we look at this, we've got a half ka squared times cos squared plus sine squared. But cos squared plus sine squared is a trig identity, right? We know that the cosine squared of theta plus the sine squared of theta is equal to 1. And so this whole expression for the total energy just comes down to a half k a squared. And so we've shown that the total energy in the oscillator is a constant, which is exactly what we would expect from conservation of energy, and it's equal to the potential energy at the maximum displacement from the uh, equilibrium position. So here we can see the plot of the uh, fraction of the total energy along here uh, function uh, as a function of time. And so we can see what these cosine squared and sine squared functions look like. What happens is the total remains constant. This black line here is the total energy E. The green line is the kinetic energy uh, T. And the blue line is the potential energy U. And we can see that the energy, if we start with an initial phase uh, phi of zero, and remember that we have our displacement defined in terms of a cosine, this means we start with the largest displacement from equilibrium, and the object is instantaneously at rest. So we have zero kinetic energy, and we have all the energy stored in potential energy in the stretched string. As the spring uh, collapses, essentially moves back to the equilibrium position. At some point here, what we find is that we reach the equilibrium position here, and we have no elastic potential energy at all, because at this point, the displacement is zero, and so the spring is neither extended nor is it compressed. There's no elastic potential energy at all. And this corresponds to the maximum kinetic energy, because that's also where we saw before the mass has the maximum velocity. And so it keeps going. Of course, for energy, it doesn't matter whether the uh, spring is compressed or extended. The energy increases either way, because it depends on x squared. So even though we're compressing the spring at this point, we still get a maximum potential energy from the elastic compression. And we're instantaneously at rest, so we have zero kinetic energy. And this is what happens in any oscillator. There is an oscillation between two forms of energy. In the equilibrium position, you have a maximum in one type of energy. And in the maximum uh, amplitude position, you have uh, all the energy sitting in a different form. So for a mechanical oscillator, typically it's potential and kinetic. Uh, but obviously, if we're dealing with electric fields uh, and magnetic fields, then you can oscillate the energy between the two of those. So now we've got an expression for the total energy, and just as we expected, the total energy of a simple harmonic oscillator is constant.
What we have, though, is we do have this total energy switches between potential energy and kinetic energy. And for a system like this, which is a little bit more complicated, it's the total potential energy that matters. So we have the total potential energy and kinetic energy, and the two oscillate backwards and forwards. And that's a general result for all mechanical oscillators. So what we've been discussing here is a perfect or ideal oscillator, one that doesn't lose energy, has a constant energy, as we've just shown. However, in real life, most oscillators lose energy as they move due to friction, air resistance, or a whole variety of other forces that extract energy from the system. And that results in a type of oscillator that we call a damped harmonic oscillator, and that's what we'll look at next.